So the question is, from this, from just doing this, let's think about then, what's really the difference between Q and K? Q is not equilibrium, you just use it to figure out which direction things are going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it seems simple, which it really is. I mean, it's really not that complicated, the difference between Q and K. It's just simply knowing that Q is not at equilibrium. So we can say, okay, well, we can plug in our values, whatever we have of these concentrations, and we know it's going to go this way in this case, because we did this, and we can compare it to K. What if this was conveniently, let's say we did divide these, and it was the same exact number. So let's say Q equaled K. What does that mean? It's at equilibrium. It's at equilibrium, right? Mm -hmm. Well. That means the concentrations that we were at were conveniently at equilibrium already, which means Q is equal to K, which then means Q then is conveniently, or these concentrations are already at equilibrium. So if we plugged in for a Q expression um, with those concentrations that are at equilibrium already, it was pretty much as if we were doing a K. Yeah. But when they are not at equilibrium, Q will be different than K. It'll either be bigger than K or less than K. There's only two options, um, at least in terms when they're not the same. I, mean, I guess the third option is this. But How would you write it then if they were equal? I mean, you can't have like plus and minuses. Oh, it would just be at equilibrium. That's it. Just be at equilibrium. Okay. I mean, could you ask a question then? saying to find x values and to plug in back? Because, you know, like normally we've never had a problem where it's equal, like it's either, you know, positive and negative on one side, mm -hmm. and then like k, take your k constant, right. plug in your variables, do quadratic, blah, blah, blah. If it was at equilibrium, could you do that? No. You'd have to, you'd have to like change it. You'd have to add stress mm -hmm. to it, right? Yeah. That's the only other thing you could do. Okay. You could like add more of a or add more of c or something like that, like one molar or something. Now you have 1.75 molar, 0.75, and 1.3. And then, here's your initial now, right? Yeah. And now, it will change the stress. It will try to even out the stress. The stress here is on this side. Or there's a whole lot more reactants than there is products in terms of equilibrium. So it will want to fill in the gap. Yeah. So that's how I like to think of it most of all. Because when we think of Q and K, it represents products over reactants. If we have a lot more products than reactants, is this number, number going to be bigger or smaller? Bigger. So if we have a big number on bottom, small number on bottom, bigger. it'll be a big number, right? Mm -hmm. so, let's, so in this case, we, we're saying that K is equal to this, right? Let's actually make it even simpler and just say, and now we're going to make it up even more and just say K equals 1, right? Mm -hmm. So that means whenever we get to an equilibrium, let's change our numbers up. No matter what, this products over reactants will give us a 1, right? So if we have 2C, I guess we could just make everything 1, right? That'll make everything 1. 1 yeah. squared over 1 times 1. Mm -hmm. So that's 1. Um, so then, let's pretend that we didn't know this, and let's say that this was like a, just someone testing our knowledge of Q and K, right? So we didn't know this, that but we know K equals 1, right? Mm -hmm. And they changed it up. They mixed it up. So they actually added, let's say, 0.5 of, th of this stuff, and they added maybe 0.7 of this stuff, and, and then they left that. They didn't change this at all. So now we have new concentrations, but we don't know if it's at equilibrium, or if it's an initial, right? Mm -hmm. We're pretending. So then we go, okay, we know K. How do we find out if this is going to shift or if this is at equilibrium? Use Q. So we'll use Q, right? So, okay, let's do that for fun. So we have 1 squared divided by 1.5 times 1.7. Okay, so we got a Q. Let's erase these. It's not confusing. So, and as a matter of fact, I'm gonna 
let's plug that in here. One squared over 1.5 times 1.7. Okay. And we ended up getting what? 0 0.3... 0 0.392. Okay, 0 0.392. And we know our k is equal to 1. So in comparison, we can see, oh, our q is different than k. So we can automatically know that it's not in equilibrium. So now we have k being greater than q, right? Mm -hmm. So then, which way is it going to shift? Um, positive a and b and negative c. Okay, good. So I'm glad you recognized that. But now let's figure out, maybe looking at products of reactants, this idea here to figure out why. So if we think of this, we have 1 squared over 1.5 times 1.7. But in an equilibrium standpoint, we would have a number divided by these numbers multiplied together to give you 1. So in this case, we have a number smaller than k, which means in our q expression, our, in comparison to the ratio, our denominator number is bigger. So it's almost as if we have more reactants than we do products in comparison. So that means if we have more over here, or the stress exists on this side, it will want to shift to the right. So whenever you have a smaller Q, that tells you that you have a, a bigger number on bottom. So if you have a smaller number here divided by a bigger number, it gives you a smaller number. You following me? Yeah. But if it was the other way, let's say that instead, instead of adding on this side, Let's say we added 0.5 molar on this side. So now we have 1.5, 1, 1. So same thing. Now we have 1.5 squared over 1 times 1. I don't know what that is. Probably 3. Yeah, same 3. <laughs> is it just 3? I'm going to make sure because, <laughs> because no, it's not. Because 1.5 times 1.5, yeah. 2.25 over 1. Okay, so 2.25. Now it's bigger than K. So now we have a Q that's bigger than K. So you could think of it as, okay, well, that means I have in this ratio a bigger number on the top. And this represents products. So that means I have a lot more products. Yeah. So if I have more products or the stress exists on this side, it'll want to shift that way. So to sum it up, tell me what you just learned about Q and K. K is at equilibrium, and Q is not. And we use Q to figure out if our new variables are at equilibrium or not. And then mm -hmm. it can tell us which way it's shifting. Yep, yeah, that's it. Okay. When you find your Q variable, like if it was 2.25, mm -hmm. I don't really use that number though, do I? Because then if I was going to plug it in, I would use the k constant mm -hmm. equals, okay. So remember, it's just what you said. Yeah. It only is used as a way of analyzing which way it'll shift. That's it. Okay.